Hello friends, Frequently Uses Shampoo as Soap here, bringing you another Dota 2 video in which we're going to be talking about three stupid looking tricks that are actually broken, all of which I've seen abused in pro matches recently. So without further ado, let's get right into it. The first stupid looking but broken trick I want to talk about is just about the most next level warding trick that I've seen for years. This trick is something that I have heard theory crafted before, but only recently have people really been putting it into practice in competitive matches. And that trick is eye spot baiting. This is where you place wards in clever areas extremely close to the eye spots, but not on them, such that when the enemy support goes to deward the eye spot with a sentry ward, they won't get your ward. The best thing about this trick is that not only will it avoid you getting dewarded, but the enemy team will play with a false sense of security in areas that they think are dewarded, but they actually aren't. So just to kind of show you in what scenarios pro teams are using these wards, uh, it's basically when you want to put a ward down in an area that you know the enemy team is likely to run through there and deward eventually, and you can't really do much to defend those wards. Ilias is in a losing scenario. There's a 7k gold lead up against him, so he knows that Team Secret is going to be running around and dewarding pretty freely. So instead of placing this ward that he just placed directly onto this eye spot, instead he puts it on this little smaller eye spot next to the eye spot or right by this statue, which for some reason doesn't actually block vision. So this ward gives, as you can see in the blue area that it covers here, it gives pretty decent vision. I mean, the most important thing about this vision is not very literally seeing Team Secret's heroes, it's more about knowing whether or not they're in that area. So this ward is not to kill anybody, it's to avoid getting killed. And I think that's a great scenario in which you place these wards where you just want to get that glimpse vision of people to protect your cores who, of course, are going to be farming. The second stupid looking but broken trick is blocking the enemy team's first creep wave in the offlane. What does this achieve? This will send your first creep wave into their tier 1 tower, rebounding the creeps towards your tower, allowing you to immediately control the creep equilibrium directly in front of your tier 1 as an offlaner. Why is this important? Because 90% of core side laning deaths happen directly in front of the enemy tower. I guarantee you, if you are losing side lanes as a core, it is almost never because you're mechanically weak or because your last hitting is bad. It's almost always because the lane is pushed too far out into the middle of nowhere and you die simply trying to get last hits. And the solution is never to last hit better or to press buttons better. It is almost always just to avoid dangerous areas altogether by playing the lane only when it's safely in front of your tower. In other words, this enemy creep blocking trick lets you achieve that ideal equilibrium from the get-go in a game, while also making the very first creep wave difficult to last hit for your opponents, since they're going to be battling with a tier 1 tower to get those last hits. Here we have a replay in front of us from the South American finals of E-Pulse, where we have our Clockwork, who is abusing this first creep wave blocking strategy. So he doesn't even really block it too much. Uh, he more so just puts the cogs down, the creeps hit the cogs, and that causes them to stutter a bit in their movement, which means that the very first creep wave is going to enter into the enemy Queen of Pain's tower, which makes it, like you can see, incredibly difficult for her to last hit those creeps against two heroes, and this pushes that first creep wave out towards the centaur, uh, closer to his tower where he can have an easier lane, and then we even have a secondary strategy here where the clockwork runs behind the tower, grabs the second creep wave, blocks the easy camp, and pulls this probably between the, yeah, tier 2 and tier 3 to just get some levels and deny some creeps from the Queen of Pain. And if he didn't abuse these strategies, he would probably be playing into a losing lane. I think Queen of Pain doesn't really care too much about the Centaur hero or a Clockwork. It's two melee heroes. And you can see that Centaur is 7 and 2, two Queen of Pain's 5 and 0. Oh. So this is going incredibly well. The Centaur now even has a, another creep wave right in his tower because of these tactics from the Clockwork. And no real quote unquote laning happened during this replay and yet we have a centaur who is completely crushing a queen of pain in the lane in a matchup that he really shouldn't i do want to throw out some tips here for this strategy because it can be a little bit difficult 
So first, you want to make sure that you double tap your hero portrait to lock the camera to your hero when you are body blocking. This makes body blocking the creeps much easier because you don't have to move your mouse away from your hero to, of course, edge pan. This also is much harder if you are trying to body block in the Radiant offlane, so you either need to block extremely well or use some sort of slow or creep blocking spell to achieve the effect on this side. Also, be mindful when you are doing this if the enemy team has a really strong power spike at level 2, or if you have a really strong power spike at level 2, because if you do this, the enemy lane is almost guaranteed to get to level 2 first. The final stupid looking but broken trick is defaulting your courier to the Roche Pit in the mid to late game of Dota 2 instead of defaulting it to your base. At first glance, this may look incredibly dangerous, but there is actually a little hidden spot by the lava fall in the Roche Pit where you can send your courier such that the enemies cannot see it with ground vision, but your courier can see if Roshan has respawned. Why is this good? Because Roche is honestly overpowered. Ever since they gave Roshan the Refresher Shard and Ags upgrade, the third Roche has become an extreme determining factor for who wins Dota in the mid to late game, because it basically gives you 15k net worth of items. In fact, some pro teams have recently GG'd out immediately after the third Roche falls for the enemy team, because they know at that point, it's a loss. So, with that being said, knowing when Roshan respawns is incredibly important. But since Roche Respawn is random, you have no way of determining whether or not it's up, especially if you're playing in the Radiant Jungle, unless you have some way of seeing into the pit, such as leaving a courier in the secret spot. Another extremely useful and downright hilarious benefit to leaving your courier near that Roche pit is that if the enemy team begins taking Roche, couriers are actually one of the best ways at stealing the Roche on drops from the Roche pit. Why is this? For a few reasons. If your courier dies while stealing items, they don't drop. They just respawn in your base next time your courier is alive. So even if it is a suicide mission, you can deny the enemy team cheese, refresher shard, eggs, you know, whatever drops from Roche. Heroes also have a lot of slot issues by the time of the second and third Roche. So often there's a lot of juggling of items that needs to happen for people to pick up the Roche items. That gives ample time for couriers to swoop in and steal these items. Couriers also, even when shielded, for some reason can be attack commanded, meaning that you can actually block the attempts for people to pick up those items off of the Roshan floor, making it even easier to steal items with the courier, who cannot issue attack commands, meaning even if you misclick the items on the ground, the courier will still move to that position that you clicked, so when you do actually hit those items, you will immediately pick them up since the courier is right on top of them. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I do appreciate it. Thank you so much also for liking, commenting, and subscribing for the YouTube algorithm because you guys did that in the last video for me. I was able to eat at the Papa John's dumpster. Uh, the hobos, they were totally cool with not attacking me as long as I gave them my YouTube money, and I was able to score some non-rotten uh, pizza slices that had pepperoni on them. So I was very excited about that. So thank you so much. I appreciate you, and I hope to see you in another video.